Hi guys, this is Bikepack Mark and I'm cycling around the world. I started my journey on 26th of August in my hometown in Germany. Since then I cycled almost 2400 kilometers through seven countries until I eventually reached Istanbul where I finished my first stage and in this video I want to do a little catch up with you guys and take you with me on my journey through Europe. <laughs> so first I obviously had to get out of Germany. I'm originally from Bavaria which is in the south of Germany so I was already in the right direction and then I basically cycled through my homeland and got to a lot of places that I already know but I saw them from a whole nother perspective now which was quite interesting for me and it was all pretty new for me since it is the first big journey that I'm doing by bike and especially alone so it was a it was a real plus that I um, could start making all these experiences in an environment that I'm still familiar with Still in my first week I um, already had to overcome my first bigger challenge because I unfortunately got pretty pretty sick after just five days of traveling. Um, maybe it was because I've eaten something wrong or maybe it was because I've been drinking water out of the river which I filtered before but maybe it wasn't enough. So I don't know the reason but I had to throw up uh, one whole day. So it got really bad but um, fortunately I only had 100 and maybe 20 kilometers to go to Vienna on the next day and there I could visit my my aunt um, and I had a good place to stay and also a good place to recover basically um, which which was pretty fine and she showed me around the city and it was basically like if I had a professional tour guide because she n knew everything about Vienna. Um, I like this city a lot and it's really worth a visit. If you haven't been there yet I'd really recommend that. From Vienna it was just a one day trip for me to get to Bratislava which is the capital of Slovakia and it was also one step further away from home to cross that border because in Austria they all speak German <laughs> and um, so that changed in Slovakia. It was the first country I've visited uh, where I couldn't use my mother tongue anymore. So Bratislava is a nice but real small capital. It has a really impressive castle on top of the city. It's also worth a visit but uh, I think it's enough for just a weekend trip because after one and a half days you basically have seen everything that you have to see. So that's also what I did. I came there almost in the evening, spent the evening um, walking around. Then I spent one more day there, so two nights. And uh, after that I kept on going all the way through Slovakia, um, a 165 kilometer trip to a town called Sturovo. And Sturovo is right at Donau and crossing the river in the next day also meant crossing the border to Hungary. Um, and since it has been only approximately 50 kilometers to Budapest, which, which was my next uh, bigger stop, I took the chance to visit the Basilica of Estergom, which was the city across the river, um, that I visited a really, really amazing and huge basilica. Um, if you ever go to Hungary, I'd really recommend visiting that place. Also, for example, if you're about to visit Budapest, you can easily do half day trip to that basilica it's worth seeing it it's just a one, one hour drive by car so you can easily go there it is uh, quite amazing in budapest i fortunately had the chance to stay at an apartment of a close friend's grandparents and i had a really really great time there it, it was such a great luck again i basically had an own apartment for me um, but also the grandparents of my friend Mark took great care of me. I really had time to get to know the city a little. I also met a friend in Budapest who went to the same school as I did. In my opinion Budapest is a city really worth visiting. It's full of 
impressive ancient buildings. The nightlife is great. And with the river separating the both sides, Buddha and Pest from each other, it also just has a great flair. You can just sit there, have a drink or probably dinner, um, watch the sunset with the Dono right in front of you. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time there and yeah, I'd recommend you to visit Budapest as well. I'm sorry to say that the rest of Hungary didn't really get me, so I didn't like the scenery much and also the people haven't been too friendly to me unfortunately so i was quite happy um, when i eventually got to romania i soon had a great chance to visit um, friends there in cluj napoca where i took a few days off as well and just went for a little running if you're interested in what it looks like just click here i made a little video of it there um, and after i recovered i continued cycling um, south through the Carpathian Mountains and I got to a city named Brazov and after that I uh, got to Bucharest which is the capital of Romania. Brazov is a smaller city right at the bottom of a mountain and in my opinion has a really great flair whereas I really didn't like Bucharest too much um, why I also left there right after only one night although I had really put some hard effort into the bike um, on the day before on the way to Bucharest. I now spent a couple of tougher cycling days in the mountains on my way to Plovdiv in Bulgaria. Right as I crossed the Bulgarian border I had my first flat tire um, on my journey and I was still pretty amazed that it almost took 2000 kilometers uh, to have the first flat tire. I thought it would be way before after that event, it was uh, two more days of cycling until I finally arrived in Plovdiv, which, as I learned, is the oldest city in Europe and the sixth oldest city in the world. Don't know how to prove that, but still, facts. I actually haven't been planning on going to Plovdiv. I just went there because I followed the invitation of a friend of mine who is studying medicine there. And the opportunity to go to Plovdiv just came up as I spent my day in Brazov. So I had to change my route a little. Instead of going to Constanza at the seaside of Romania, I went more south to the center of Bulgaria. Because I had to get away from a great cold wave behind my back and I also was really looking forward to visit my friend, I pushed really hard across these mountains and that also maybe is the reason why um, when I arrived there I unfortunately got a little sick but luckily I was at my friend's place in an apartment where I could recover a lot better than if I had to cycle and camp in that cold weather. So during my stay in Plovdiv I realized that I won't make it to the ferry um, in time that I actually wanted to take from Burgas in Bulgaria to cross the Black Sea to get to Georgia. So I decided to go a little further and just to add one country, go to Turkey and go to Istanbul from where I could take a bus. And although I had a little rough time in the end of my stay in Bulgaria and at the beginning of my stay in Turkey, due to the cold I was still overcoming the bad weather and some mechanical problems, I really enjoyed my stay in Turkey and especially in Istanbul a lot. So the people that I met there were all open-minded, they were super nice and friendly. And that credit goes especially to my host Nurai, who I'm really thankful that I met, and all of her family and friends that I got to know. And only doesn't count for all the people who had anything to do with public transportation, so as taxi and bus drivers. I also got the confirmation, which I already thought, that the picture that we get represented of Turkey in the media in Germany um, is only one side of the medal and is really far away from the perspective of all the well-educated and nice people that I had the chance to meet there. 
So that is also the point where I'm probably better off stop talking about the political situation in Turkey because actually I'd really like to visit this country again without being locked up in jail because I said something mean about anybody there. So at the moment I'm in beautiful Georgia almost on top of a 3,000 meter high mountain and um, that is Mount Kaspeki it's over 5,000 meter high I only got my running gear on so that is um, one step too far for me today but I'm really enjoying the time here as I already said I got here by bus from Istanbul instead of taking the ferry across the Black Sea and that is because of four reasons first it was way cheaper. The ferry would have cost me 130 euros for the bus with my bike withdrawal, which cost extra, um, only costed around 50 euros. So I was better off taking the bus in that point. Second, I know this is hard for you, but winter is coming. And I really want to get to the south as quick as possible. Third, I wanted to get to Tiflis in time to get my visa for Iran. And fourth, because my aunts took a flight to Tiflis and I wanted to get there and meet them because despite of the nice company that I was looking for, they also brought me a care package from home. Thank you, mommy. <laughs> so that was pretty much the summary of my first stage where I cycled through just a part of Eastern Europe Let's have a short uh, look on the second stage and what I'm planning to do there. My second stage will lead me through the country as Georgia, Armenia and Iran. And it will cover approximately 3000 kilometers and uh, 30,000 meters of elevation. So it's gonna be way tougher than the first stage with just 2400 kilometers and 17,000 meters of climbing. Further, I will not have uh, so many friends to visit on my way anymore and the language barrier will probably also get a little bigger. But this journey for me is about growing and so I'm really, really looking forward uh, to face these challenges. And I'll be happy to get to know the people and enjoy Iranian hospitality, which I heard a lot of. Um, because I already met so many people from different countries that are interested in this journey and the stories I've got to tell. I decided to give you guys some more coverage in English like this video and in addition there will be um, the ongoing of my video journal which is in German but also not with too much spoken language since it's more about the vibe and getting to see what I see. For the ones of you who understand German there will be of course um, my daily updates on my so-called Logbuch and what I'm going to change for certain for the following stage will be the stories in the Tagebuch. So now that the basics are not all new anymore, I will try to focus on the real interesting stories and probably give you guys some more facts about the gear I use and all that stuff. So that is the plan for the next six or seven weeks. If you guys want to follow me and join me on my journey, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, for more coverage and infos, you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, all under Bikepack Mark, or check out my website, bikepackmark.com. Um, you can find all the links in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and. Mm -hmm.